China, 1966. Hard times, a hard life. A teenage boy struggles in the fields, hoping for a way out. At that time, it was a very revolutionary Communist Party in charge. Mao Zedong wanted to change the social fabric of society. So anybody born from 1949 onwards was encouraged to join what they called the Cultural Revolution. Well, if you refused to conform, you could be moved out to a labor camp forcibly to do hard labor. You could be thrown in jail. You could be denounced in a meeting. Um, you could be removed from your family to never see them again. Your family could suffer. Uh, you could be physically abused, possibly even killed. I'm Travis Scholl, editor of the Concordia Journal. I recently visited with the Chinese painter He Qi. He remembers life as a teenager and the hard work of the fields. He was sent there to undo the effects of city life. As a teenage boy, I, I thought I was not strong enough to do such very hard farmer work for me as a teenage boy, so what, what things I can do? His options are limited. Even his father's university is shut down. Mathematics counterproductive to the Communist Party. My father, he was a famous uh, mathematics professor, teaching mathematics, very famous uh, in Nanjing University. A son would have had to try to distance himself from his father and from that past and try to prove his loyalty to the party, prove his loyalty to, to Mao's thought and reject the old that was in his family life in the city or whatever to get rid of bourgeois tendencies or, or rightist capitalist tendencies so they would be pushed out. So he'd have to work hard in the fields um, and struggle against elders, struggle against old elements in society that were now on the outs. You wouldn't have much choice. There was no education anymore. Um, school was suspended for 10 years. Even his university was closed. Uh, no teaching and no useful for us to continue studying mathematics. You had to speak the party line. Um, you had to know what Mao said and conform your life to those things. And if you didn't conform your life to those things, you were socially on the outs. You'd have no friends. You'd have no connections. Uh, you'd have to try to fend for yourself and eventually you'd be considered a counter-revolutionary against whatever Mao was seeing and then you'd wind up in jail or whatever. During that time, all churches in China totally destroyed. There really was no need for churches at that time. Uh, the socialist ideology replaced religion altogether. Uh, icons, pictures of Chairman Mao uh, would become an object of veneration. So if you look at, uh, well, today, Tiananmen Square, you can still see a big portrait of Chairman Mao there. Um, they were ubiquitous, and you had to have such a thing to kind of prove your loyalty and, and uh, pay devotion uh, or honor to that. Images of Chairman Mao become very important and are in high demand. The teenager sees a way out when the competition to paint the face of Mao. He turns to his neighbor, the Dean of Fine Art at Nanjing Normal University, to teach him the basics of sketching and painting. He was very famous fine art educator. When he was young, he studied art in Paris, in France. Yeah, he said, oh, He Qi, come here to my home. I would like to teach you how to do paint. Yeah, do not follow your father now. Mathematics is no useful. Let's follow me. The teenager wins the competition and finds refuge from the hard labors of the fields at the easel of the art studio. He discovers a sanctuary from the turmoil of the revolution in the paintings of the classics. My neighbor, Professor Lü, uh, I did borrow some of his old art books back to the field, to the countryside. Okay. So when the book cover, uh, it's a yellow, the old magazine, the, and the book cover uh, by Raphael's, the image, uh, Raphael's Madonna. Uh, the virgin in a chair uh, holding baby Jesus. Very, very uh, peaceful. Yeah, very touched my heart. I was very moved by seeing, oh, this image, oh, Madonna with baby Jesus. Carrying peaceful message. This is most. This is the first, first time I saw Christian image. Oh, very, very touched my heart. This peaceful message continues to intrigue and inspire this young painter. 
Every corner in China, people just fighting against, uh, criticize. No culture, just destroyed mm -hmm. every culture. So, no. As a Chinese, I thought we had too much struggle spirit. We have too much criticize, struggle, revolution, but we lack peaceful message. Yeah, where we could find peaceful message? Yeah, for me, first time, oh, such peaceful uh, Madonna holding baby Jesus, carrying peaceful message. Yeah, so, so, so in the daytime, I, I still paint Chen Mao. In the midnight, I paint Madonna for sharing with my friends. My younger sister still collect uh, one of my uh, copy, <laughs> Madonna, by Rogers, Madonna, yeah. His success as an artist allows him to further his studies abroad. He Qi becomes the first mainland Chinese after the Cultural Revolution to earn a PhD in religious art. He writes his dissertation while studying at Hamburg Art Institute in Germany, where he is also able to research medieval art. I got many uh, invitations to tra traveling around 10 different European countries, in Paris, in Germany, in uh, Switzerland, yeah, in, in Italy, yeah, many uh, in UK. So I could see many uh, masterpieces in the original, mm. not only in the medieval art and the Renaissance art and contemporary. Yeah, yeah, I got very strong. Oh, I just open my. Closer to home, He Qi discovers the religious paintings of Japanese artist Sadeo Watanabe, and is impressed at how Watanabe is influencing Japanese culture. He came to visit my. And then in the Lock Seminary, I was a former professor teaching there, teaching Christian art. And we had a very interesting discussion, and, and he, he, he gave a talk to uh, faculty students. And I also invite Art Nanjing, art Nanjing College uh, professor and students to join to uh, make discussion. And then I wrote an article to introduce what Labi's artworks mm -hmm. and publish in a popular art magazine in China, and uh, that's very good. Then 1990, I, I, I was invited by uh, Asian Christian Art Association, the headquarters in Kyoto, mm -hmm. and I went to Tokyo to meet my friend, Watanabe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there in Tokyo, uh, about 1995, he passed away. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, his, his work very uh, ins inspiration, you know. Concordia Seminary St. Louis is home to one of the largest Watanabe collections in the world. Seminary curator Eric Stancliffe explains how this came about. Artwork in our collection here at the seminary mostly comes in through donations. We do have some that we purchase along the way with a, a modest budget. The Watanabe's were purchased on behalf of the seminary uh, through the effort of two professors back in 1970 or so, uh, brothers, Bill and Fred Danker who were on faculty here at the time. Um, my understanding is that Bill dabbled in the art world as an avocation, and he had come to know the work of Watanabe and actually had come to know the artist himself. And on a trip to Japan around 1970, uh, they acquired the 20 prints that are in our collection. Uh, the practical department actually paid for them, and, uh, and they donated them to the art collection uh, and installed them in classrooms, for the most part, around the campus. Watanabe, being a Christian, realized he had a big battle to do with the fact that Japanese people would see Christianity as an outside influence. It always had been. It was banned in the 1600s, only became legal again in the 1850s, and it never really picked up after that. It was, it was small. That was from the West. That was from cultural imperialist. Jesus was not a, a Japanese god. Japanese are going to want to pay attention to, to Buddha and other gods that are considered Japanese, the kami. So what Watanabe had to do was indigenize Christianity, to bring it to a level where Japanese would, would see a familiar Japanese image and also see Christ and not say, oh, you know, that looks like a Raphael painting or looks like something that is foreign to them. It looks like something they're familiar with that they've grown up with. Watanabe definitely wanted to influence Japanese culture with his work. I think that's why he used the traditional methods 
um, and why, of course, he chose the biblical themes. The whole point of the Minge, or folk art movement, uh, was, as the name implies, art for the people. At the peak of his career, in fact, uh, Watanabe was, uh, was known to have said that he would prefer his art hang in places where ordinary people gather rather than in the elite uh, and scattered art museums. As Watanabe's art engaged Japanese culture, He Chi's art is having a similar impact reaching out to Chinese culture and through China to the rest of the world. Most of ordinary Chinese people, yeah, they, when they're talking about uh, Buddhism, mm -hmm. they think about it's a kind of Chinese culture. It's belong to our Chinese culture. But actually, Buddhism was not originated from China. It's <laughs> from <laughs> India. India yeah. yeah, but passing through 2,000 years, it's mixed with Chinese culture, very strongly mixed with Chinese culture. But when they're talking about Christianity, oh, that's a Western religion, right. not belong to our Chinese. Oh, no, 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 that's Western. But this is a, but I, I do think it's a wrong idea. Yeah, right. Right. Well, the gospel message is not only belong to Western people, but also could belong to yeah. Eastern, yeah. belong to our Chinese people. It's a universal yeah. message, very, very important. We have to change the wrong idea. Right, right. <laughs> Christianity can be seen as a Western thing. It's, it's not necessarily a thing for Chinese people. You know, so you ask a Chinese student maybe, you know, what do you believe? And they'll say, well, we Chinese believe this, or traditionally we believe that. They might not necessarily have a personal faith or acknowledge that. I just try to, to, to change uh, ordinary Chinese people the wrong, wrong idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. To let them know my gospel message is right. universal. Hu Qi's art has shown in the U.S., the U.K., Switzerland, Germany, Canada, Japan, and Hong Kong, as well as in mainland China. In China, Hu Qi hopes to express the gospel message through traditional Chinese art styles while introducing Western colors to this tradition. Read uh, the first chapter of uh, Old Testament, God creation. Genesis, yeah, God say, let there be night. The God creation, the word, colorful word. I enjoy Chinese folk art. Yes, another way. Yeah, not only Chinese scholar painting. Yeah, Zen Buddhist, mm, I, I don't like so much, but <laughs> Chinese folk art, I very appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I uh, particularly for Chinese minority people, they yeah, live in the southwest part of China. Yeah, oh, looks like uh, Central America, very colorful. I spent many times uh, traveling around the southwest part of China, even I spent over three and a half years living in Tibet. Yeah, that's like very colorful, yeah. As an artist, they, have, they could have many different choices as an uh, expression style, and the artist always sharing the, uh, the passion, suffering, feeling, but for me, I, I do think um, I have too much suffering um, for my life. I don't want to share my personal suffering with people. But people need peaceful message. He has come a long way from that teenage boy in the fields, a worldwide painter of the peaceful message. Life is too short. Mm -hmm. We can. We can only focus on to do one thing. Yeah, I, I just, I only interested in do the Christian artworks for sharing peaceful message with people. There's more of my visit with Hu Qi at this website, and there's plenty of other great resources at all of Concordia Seminary's websites. For Concordia Journal Currents, this is Travis Scholl.